All right, so what do you do before you uh, shoot a picture? You hold the camera. Pretty straightforward, right? One would think very simple. But I go over this at workshops and some folks have asked me about it. So we thought we'd just kind of do this little thing here right in the workroom here in the studio. And I uh, give credit where credit is due. I have to hark back to an old time New York City press photographer named Keith Torrey, who was a terrific guy who called me aside when I was just a pup at the Daily News and he said, give me a kid, I'm going to show you something that uh, you hold the camera like this when there's no light and it's the uh, shutter speed and uh, all that sort of stuff. Keith was left-eyed, as am I. And I also use motor-driven cameras, which as you can see obviously are deeper than like a D70 or D80. So this particular technique, I'll be very honest with you, is most adaptable, most helpful if you are left-eyed and you are using a motor-driven camera. There's elements of it you can use uh, if you focus right-eyed, but apologies to right-eyed focusers, this is mostly useful if you are left-eyed. Anyway, the first thing I do when I pick up a camera is I sling it like this, okay? It just gives me a point of reference, a little bit of an anchor in case I have an accident, which of course I never do, but uh, camera around the wrist, there we go. What I don't do, of course, is this. When I take the camera and I try to focus it, I don't hold the camera out here like I'm holding like an Easter egg or something, okay, delicately. That's not really great. If you can see what's happening here, my center of gravity is not supporting the camera. I'm bent almost double. This is like a one-way ticket to back pain and fatigue, okay? We vlogged a little bit about this the other day. Uh, fatigue will hurt you. Fatigue will hurt the quality of your pictures. When you get tired, you get careless. You get sloppy. You start to not care. You start to think about the bed back at the hotel instead of the job at hand, you know, or dinner or a hot cup of coffee. All those things start to creep into your brain and mitigate your focus, okay? So if you conserve your physical energy by holding your camera properly during the day, your pictures are going to get better and sharper because you'll be holding the camera steadier. So what I do when I take the camera is I swing my body around. Again, I refer to a boxing stance, okay? It's almost like that. Your knees are bent and the camera comes up in here and that deep camera body goes right into your shoulder, just like that, okay? If you notice now, when I turn to shoot, okay, where's my center of gravity? It's not pitched like this. It's underneath the camera, supporting the camera. Now, I have a pretty wide lens on right now. I've got the 14-24 on. So I can put my, my, uh, hand underneath to support that lens if I so choose. But oftentimes what I do, because the lens is doing so many things automatically, my f-stops are now at my forefinger, okay? I've got to zoom a bit, but that's really not, you know, what we used to have to do anyway, because we used to have an f-stop ring, all that stuff, you know, all that jazz that kept our left hand busy. Now, if I'm skinny on shutter speed and say I want to take a picture of Brad here who's holding the video camera, Okay, autofocus, Brad, autofocus. Um, what I do is, I've got the camera like this, I bring it in, I take this hand and I go like this. And then I've got my shoulder, the camera base, my body's underneath the camera, my knees are flexed, and I squeeze. Exhale and squeeze. And you can shoot really sharp at slow shutter speeds like this. Guarantee you'll pick up a shutter speed or two. What's a shutter speed or two? It's an ISO rating or two, okay? It's the difference between 800 and 400, okay? That's my wife, Annie, in the kitchen, if you hear that in the background. She's doing dishes and stuff like that. She's also feeding Nigel, our 19-pound cat, which is a momentous event. It is, it's the celebration of the day. I'm gonna ask, ask him to come out here um, eventually. Anyway, now, I digress. You can translate this technique when you're using a long lens. That is a situation, obviously, where you're not going to take your left hand and put it over your right hand. You're going to use your left hand, okay, loop the straps, okay. Some folks move the lens foot. I don't necessarily. Sometimes it's a good thing to do. You get it out of the way, then you can grip this. Or, if you're comfortable, you can also grip this. Pull this around, so now I've got the barrel of the lens. If you notice, we're using the lens coats, okay? On my long glass, I've been finding the lens coats to be a great barrier, great protection, because I'm clumsy, okay? There it is. 
I'm clumsy. So take the camera, you go in here, the base is right in connected to your shoulder. There's no lungs, there's no heartbeat, there's nothing up here but bone and muscle. <laughs> in my situation, an incredible amount of muscle. Um, moving along, come in here, and where's my elbow? Right down in here. So now I've got the camera, the lens, everything is as compact and as steady as I can make it. And honestly, um, I've shot... <laughs> it's Nigel. <laughs> Nigel, where are you, big guy? Come here for a second. Anyway, back to the lens. Uh, that's, that's it, basically. It's very simple. Um, one thing that I would caution you, we've gone through kind of the steadiness of it, the center of gravity of it, all of that. One thing I do caution you is, I see this all the time, obviously, on uh, wider lenses, the overhand grip, okay? Uh, you are not pitching on opening day of the major leagues. So you're not bringing the old curveball, okay? So why do this, okay? Look at what happens here when I've got an overhand grip. You know, where's my elbow? Okay, it's out here. Okay, um, don't do that, okay? Why would you put extra weight on top of the lens? Okay, why would you move your elbow in this kind of a fashion? It's gonna to lead to like shoulder pain and stuff like that, especially at my age. Okay, so what I really recommend is an underhand grip, which I mentioned before. Your grip should come under here. You support the barrel of the lens, the heel of your hand down in here is up against the camera. Okay, you can be really, really rock steady with this. You can shoot pictures at shutter speeds you wouldn't have thought possible, okay? And also don't do this. I love it, I see tourists doing this. You know, they're out there with a the little point and shoot and they're horizontal and they wanna frame vertically and all of a sudden they go like this. Don't do that either. Kidding. Anyway, thanks for stopping by at the, uh, at the workroom here at uh, McNally Photography.